Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. So, here we are. After four movies attempting to set up a DC Comics extended universe, each of them experiencing varying levels of critical and audience enthusiasm, some behind-the-scenes turmoil, reshoots, and loads of speculation, Justice League finally is arriving in theaters. I have seen it, and I can report that, uh... Eh, it's okay. By saying it's okay, that's being generous. It's not better than Wonder Woman. It, it's not even better than Man of Steel. But overall, I, I guess it could have been worse. And there is evidence that it could have been much worse up there on the screen. All in all, Justice League has the feel of a bad movie that has been changed, chopped, sliced, prettied up, and embellished just enough to make it slightly more palatable. To that end, it serves up just enough good comic book hero fun to satisfy fans of the titular heroes, but that's only because fans of the titular heroes are far more willing to overlook inconsistencies of tone, story, and narrative flow. They've simply been waiting too long to see these characters tear it up on screen, and they will get what they've been waiting for. On those merits, as a series of barely connected vignettes, just this league is only a passable success, but as a film critic, judging it by the usual cinematic criteria, it's far less easy to forgive. Now, it's fitting that the credit sequence of Justice League is not set to some rousing superhero theme music score. And, and the movie does have a great one of those, by Danny Elfman, no doubt, who not only gets to repeatedly mine his own iconic Batman theme from the 80s, but John Williams' Superman score, and even for a brief second, Hans Zimmer's Man of Steel score as well. No, 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 that title sequence is set to an emo cover of the morose, cynical Leonard Cohen classic Everybody Knows, and combined with a montage of bleak imagery that illustrates the world mourning for Superman, it really does little to ease your worries that Justice League will be another brooding, over-stylized trash heap from director Zack Snyder, who left the film halfway through due to a family tragedy and was replaced by the Avengers director Joss Whedon, leaving some to speculate, and such speculation was encouraged by how lengthy the alleged reshoot process was, that Whedon would be lightening up the film and making it more fun. But during that opening montage, as you hear lyrics like Everybody knows that the fight is fixed. The camera pans past a homeless beggar on the street with a hand-scrawled sign that simply reads, I tried. I, I really think that guy should have been played by Joss Whedon in a cameo because it's pretty obvious he did try to save this thing. But hey, he's Joss Whedon. He's not Superman. Now, Joss Whedon's fingerprints are all over this movie, mostly for the good, but sometimes in jarringly obvious ways. There are scenes in which two characters are speaking on location, and then there's a cut, and a character is suddenly in front of an obvious blue screen background with a slightly different hairstyle. There are jokes, a few fun character moments, and a few moments where characters relate to each other on a human level, especially a few exchanges between Batman and Wonder Woman that feel like they're actually going somewhere interesting, but that don't fit with the majority of the movie or the scene in which they're contained, because the overall movie is quick, loud, and very surface level on everything from the characters to the plot. And it's moments like that that you snap your fingers and say, Whedon, right there, that was Joss Whedon. Oh, and then there's the matter of Henry Cavill's face. Yes, as has been much publicized, Henry Cavill had to do a lot of reshooting after he had grown a thick mustache on his face for Mission Impossible 6. That means they had to quickly and expensively erase the mustache digitally for every scene he reshot because his face doesn't look quite right in certain scenes, you can tell which ones were added in post. That's how I know that Whedon has had a positive influence, because those scenes are pretty good. Does what I'm describing sound a little chaotic to you? Because, hey, that's how it felt. The fingerprints are there. They are noticeable. And as a result, the movie feels like a sort of Frankenstein's monster with so many limbs and organs transplanted in that the overall body has rejected them and the whole thing goes haywire. Thankfully, the story isn't as convoluted as Batman v Superman. In fact, it swings way over to the other extreme of being overly simple. There's this generic, uninteresting CGI bad guy named Steppenwolf who needs these three boxes to destroy the world, see? And I tell you, the film tries so little to get you to care about the stakes that once he even grabs one of those boxes off screen. Instead, the movie's too busy introducing us to people like Aquaman, who looks cool, but who we never really get to know in a meaningful way. Ditto times two for Cyborg, who is actually the most interesting new hero, who gets shockingly little elaboration, including what exactly his powers are and how they work. And we also get The Flash, who provides some great mugging and comic relief. We meet each hero, we see a couple of their ancillary characters who will surely show up in their own standalone movies later, and then we're off to another noisy, messy, unintelligible set piece, or some hand wringing, or some bit of exposition heavy dialogue. Yes, they talk about the threat all the time in this movie, but none of them really seem that scared of it, nor that motivated to stop it. Compare Wonder Woman's attitude here to how ardently she was striving to do the right thing in her own standalone movie, and how passionate Batman was about killing Superman in his previous outing, 
And look at them both here. They both seem like they're going through the motions. And Affleck especially looks like he barely even wants to be there, just rolling his eyes every five minutes at something. And so it goes for a movie that was delivered to theaters, practically still dripping wet from the finishing lab, and with bucket loads of sometimes very cheap-looking CGI substituting for grandeur. It surely has been lightened by Joss Whedon, sometimes literally. I mean, I saw this movie's Dolby Vision laser projection, and in some night scenes, the black sky was speckled with noise, like the picture was supposed to be darker, but someone went and color corrected the heck out of it so you could just see everything more clearly. But even that literal lightening of the mood can't make a cohesive story out of this mess. I award Justice League with a heavy heart, a small bag of popcorn. There were moments when I had fun or saw a spark of life in this thing, but you simply cannot string together enough of those moments to make for a satisfying work of cinema. Well, that does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop. And click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more, and support us by clicking subscribe while you're there, and by clicking the thumbs up icon below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on Justice League in the comments as well. Just, let's please, just keep it civil and spoiler free, okay? In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel, and everybody knows the boat is sinking. Everybody knows the captain lied.